What exists in reality and what does not? Despite the fact that you might think you know the solution, the James Webb Space Telescope has entered the discussion and its results are startling. We are characters in a simulation. How did we get into the simulation? And how did the James Webb Space Telescope make this discovery? Stay tuned as we delve into the startling revelation made by the James Webb Space Telescope to the global space sector. You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. How does that work? Have you seen any of the Matrix films? The movies show a bleak future in which robots have enslaved people and they live in a virtual world known as the Matrix. The Matrix can be altered by hackers, malfunctions, and anomalies, and certain people can escape it and view the real reality. As the movie implies that we live in a simulation, what is genuine and what is not becomes a question in light of this. It also prompted the query of how to distinguish between actual and unreal things. Data that can be observed and measured using the senses or instruments are known as empirical evidence and are used by scientists to determine what is true. Additionally, they apply the scientific method, which is a systematic process of generating theories, putting them to the test through experiments, and revising them in light of the findings, the past and present. This answer unquestionably applies to the universe as well, such as the question of whether anything is real or whether we simply are participants in a simulation. Scientists are inquiring about the natural world and are open-minded about it but they also employ critical thinking and skepticism to assess claims and evidence. The Chinese philosopher Zengai's butterfly dream is thought to have given rise to the idea and dread that reality is not what it first appears to be thousands of years ago. In 2003, philosopher Nick Bostrom argued that future civilizations would have access to enormous amounts of computing power that would allow them to carry out an almost infinite number of simulations, making the possibility appear inevitable. If so, then it seems extremely certain that we will be living in one of the many historical simulations that have been created, or else post-human society won't have any reason to create historical simulations, or won't ever have technological prowess. Silicon Valley millionaires have reportedly sought to conduct their own investigations in the decades after Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson first advanced the hypothesis, with two going so far as to covertly hire scientists to work on freeing humans from the simulation. But fortunately, or perhaps sadly, we are powerless to escape. Our cosmos cannot be simulated, and mathematicians have known this for years, because they have been trying to do so. That as far as we are aware, this is the real reality. On the surface, the case for simulation seems strong. After all, 40 years ago, the pinnacle of technology was a simple rectangle made of two pixels. We now have access to photorealistic graphics, deep fakes, and virtual reality. Future civilizations seem destined to make much more progress and recreate events from the past. Before even addressing the scientific issues, this argument encounters a few obstacles, such as the assumption that such a civilization in the distant future could ever exist, or that the species would seek to reproduce humans on Earth or even in this galaxy. It is as likely but scientifically meaningless as the existence of God in the multiverse. The way we think about physics, space, and time also has an impact on this argument. Philosophers linked Isaac Newton's discovery of the laws of motion, which he made more than 300 years ago, to one of the most exquisite technical advances that humanity has ever created, clocks. The relationship between the rhythm of the universe on Earth and in the stars appear to be obvious. Theologian William Paley used this analogy in his book Arguments for God's Reality. He claimed that just as discovering God in the world suggests the reality of God, so does discovering a watch among the grass proving the existence of a watchmaker. Every evidence of design and artifice that was there in the watch is present in the works of nature, with the distinction being that nature is more or more, and that is a degree that is greater than any calculations. However, neither Newton nor Paley had to deal with the complexity of today's cosmos, which has emerged to contain such bizarre aberrations as dark matter, quantum physics, and superposition string theory. As we learned more about reality, the concept of a mechanical universe gradually vanished. In 50 or 100 years, a virtual universe will seem just as silly as a clockwork universe. Researchers have been studying both the extraordinarily large and the extremely small pallium for many years in an effort to understand the origins of the universe. Those who support simulation believe that existence or simulators may explain how life came to be, while those who favor the existence of the watchmaker do not. The greatest physical explanations for the cosmos are provided by the Big Bang and the cosmic background radiation it left behind. There isn't much indication, though, that this has been imitated. We look at the subatomic particles rather than the stars. So if the universe were a clock, where would the gears be? If the universe were a simulation, where would we look for pixels? 
Pixels and gears both have the quality of being covert. This means in mathematics that they are distinct from one another and separated from one another. In many ways, Lego bricks are attached to their bases. From a distance, a large Lego sphere could seem beautifully smooth, yet up close, the individual Lego pieces are visible, according to what we can discern. The universe is not like Lego or Grand Theft Auto. Trains do not resurrect, and hat-wearing NPCs do not exist. On the surface, everything seems to be in order, but the video game characters are not doing the required investigation. Currently, it is conceivable that the universe contains a pixel, but current scientific knowledge is insufficient to explore this possibility. One of the lowest sizes we are aware of is the Planck length, which represents the length of the universe after the first 1,043 seconds of the Big Bang as it expanded. Sadly, the Planck length is 15 orders of the magnitude smaller than that of the Large Hadron Collider, which currently test that would still not be sufficient to prove that the universe is a simulation, but rather just that it is discrete. However, there is still the issue of the universe. The theory of Nielsen Nino Mia, this is a no-go theorem, an impossibility where the condition involves hands and can happen in reality, but not in simulations. Think about waving yourself to while you're looking in the mirror. Your reflection will raise its opposite arm in imitation of you. Chirularity, which derives from the Greek word for hand, is demonstrated in this instance. An object that can be separated from its mirror image is said to be chiral. Big molecules, like those found in fruit, have the feature that a left hand cannot be superimposed on the right hand. In the limonene, molecules in the mint and the caraway are the interviewed counterparts. Despite the fact that orange and lemon peels appear to be very different from one another in terms of color, flavor, and scent, both the molecule of carbon and the drug thalidomide, which is dangerous in its mirror form, and has caused thousands of children to be born with significant birth defects, are reflections of one another. In December 1956, Chen Sung Wu made the discovery of chirality while observing atoms vaporize. These are radioactive cobalt-60 atoms, which were they decay into nickel-60 emit an electron. The electrons should have degenerated into a random direction based on their spin, whether in the real world or in a mirror world at this point. They exhibited a longing for the deteriorated direction instead. Imagine holding up a newspaper while gazing in the mirror, only to find that the words are totally legible as if being from another universe is reflecting you. This was discovered at the subatomic level by Wu, and the conflict between chirality and discretization arises when the laws of physics are computer simulated. If space is periodic, in reality, quantum physics phrase that roughly translates to circle momentum is discrete and composed of several parts. As opposed to how physics predicts, if momentum is a circle and space is discrete, as it is in a simulation, you will ultimately return to your starting location, exclusiveness. The mirror universe has no impact on certain physics concepts. The strong nuclear force that holds quarks together, electricity, gravity, and magnetism are all unaffected by the idea of parity. In the mirror that is blind to particle spin, these forces operate simultaneously. For the past 20 years, scientists have attempted to simulate chiral particles, but ultimately they just get around the problem by replicating both hands of the particles and then disregarding the other ones when analyzing the data. Simulators will attempt to circumvent this by utilizing more complex situations. The latter is only important for the simulation argument. There is a difference between using being able to imitate the sensations and experiences of a human being, or all humans are being able to simulate the universe completely at the level of fundamental physics, such as simulation in Bostrom's opinion, might rely on procedural creation to only produce the data that researchers are interested in at the moment. The soil does not actually appear in the ground beneath your feet, it only appears when you dig it. Neil deGrasse Tyson has suggested that the speed of light is the limit of travel because if we go any faster, our unknown overlords would not be able to recreate our cosmos rapidly enough. This is known as the light cone. The Carl boson exists only when scientists try to quantify it. However, Professor Berman exclaims that the universe is complex and that nature seems to know everything because scientists have seen the same supernova explode four times in several places as a result of the curvature of light caused by gravity. It is difficult to mimic parts of the universe without inevitably modeling the entire thing, according to him, because general relativity and causal linkage have been thrown into disarray. Our current understanding of the science is midway between simulation theory and reality. Occam's razor, which holds that the best solution is always the simplest, is nevertheless a tough nut to crack. One question that the simulation idea raises is whether or not the Big Bang actually started the simulation that we currently inhabit. To put it another way, did the simulation's creators or programmers start from a state of singularity and let it develop in accordance with physics principles? 
or did they deliberately model the Big Bang and its aftermath? Among other instances, the simulation began with the Big Bang. This situation may have been inspired by simplicity and curiosity. It's possible that the creator or programmer wanted to create a realistic simulation of their own universe, or a variant of it and track how it changed over time. They might have started the simulation from a singularity if it didn't follow the known or postulated physical laws. This idea is also agreeable to some theistic or philosophical viewpoints that see the Big Bang as a creation event. The simulation includes the Big Bang given its complexity and control, the scenario is acceptable. It's possible that the developer or programmer wanted to make a more intricate and tailored simulation of their own universe, or a different one to test how it would respond to various scenarios. They may have included a reproduction of the Big Bang and its after effects in their design, and they may have changed some of the beginning conditions or parameters to achieve different results. The Big Bang's interpretation as a manifestation of divine will or intelligence in some philosophical or religious beliefs makes the scenario consistent with them as well. And the James Webb Space Telescope enters the picture here. JWST By examining the cosmic microwave background CMB, the oldest light in the universe that was produced some 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the JWST has been studying the origin of the universe. The geometry, pace of expansion, meta-content, and primordial fluctuations of the cosmos, as well as its history, are all revealed in the CMB. With unmatched precision and sensitivity, JWST has been monitoring the CMB spectrum and using its mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, to search for any departures from the standard cosmological model. The first light sources that emerged during the cosmic dark ages, which lasted hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang, have also been a focus of JWST's research into the Big Bang. The initial galaxies were small and feeble, housing supermassive black holes, whereas the first stars were large and short-lived, releasing heavy elements into the ultraviolet light. These sources have been found and characterized, as well as the distances and redshifts, using JWST's near-infrared cameras, NearCam, and near-infrared spectrograph, NearSpec. By observing the period of reionization, which occurred when the first light sources ionized the great majority of hydrogen atoms in the intergalactic medium, Ending the cosmic dark ages, the JWST also has been studying the Big Bang. The CMB was affected by the reionization epoch, which has also had an impact on the formation and development of galaxies. With its MIRI, solid spectrograph, and near-infrared imager sensors, the JWST has been examining the history of reionization and its effects on cosmic structures. The Cosmic Dawn, which happened when the first stars and galaxies produced enough molten hydrogen to cool and compress into more intricate structures has also been observed by JWST. The cosmic dawn marked the transition from a simple to a complex cosmos and had an impact on subsequent star formation history. Using its near-cam, near-spec, closest and MIRI detectors, JWST has been looking for molecular hydrogen emission from these structures and analyzing their physical characteristics. Melvin Watson, a physicist at the University of Portsmouth, is another scientist who has suggested that we live in a simulation. He has developed a way of assessing whether we are living in a computer simulation. His theory bases its predictions on the idea that space, time, and matter are fundamentally created from bits of information. Additionally, he makes the assumption that every simulation has a minimum size or resolution below which it cannot be divided further. According to Watson, the universe's fundamental particles may include information about a potential programming language. He suggests that we identify patterns or anomalies that reveal the simulation's underlying code by analyzing the properties of these particles, such as their mass and charge. It's like enlarging a computer image till we can see the individual pixels in that regard. Watson developed a mathematical model that explains how elementary particles information content might vary depending on whether or not they are included in that simulation. He also suggested using current particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider to test his theory. He claims that his experiment can distinguish between three possibilities. One, in which we are not living in a simulation and physical reality is not influenced by information. Another, in which we are doing so. And third, in which we are doing so, but physical reality is influenced by information. The simulation hypothesis has been empirically tested in a number of ways, including Watson's theories. Searching for inconsistencies or flaws in physical laws is another strategy. Watson's proposal is unique in that it focuses on elementary particle information content as a potential simulation signature. What do you think of Watson's theory? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you at the next one.